Hello, and thank you for listening to She Did What, a podcast exploring women's history. This week, we will take a look at Margaret Knight, whose inventions during the Industrial Revolution are still in use today. The Industrial Revolution brought a new opportunity for women in factories all along the New England coast. This was the first time women were able to escape the financial dependency on their families and earn their own wage. However, before we start, it is worth noting that not only were conditions horrific for women and children, but of course women were paid less than men. And black women were paid least of all, although they were oftentimes performing the most dangerous jobs. Women were involved in the amazing and life-changing inventions at the time. However, as was common with many ideas regardless of gender, courts found themselves saturated with cases revolving around patent claims. The fact that women and children were at the factories during their adolescence meant that their education suffered. And there are many accounts of women who discussed not knowing how to read or write or both, which is a great catalyst for the idea of women having their inventions stolen. And that brings us to today's story of Margaret Knight, the woman who invented the flat bottom paper bag that is still used today. Margaret was born in Maine where factories were plentiful as factories were powered by water. While men stayed behind at the farms, women would go into more urban areas to work, as was the case with Margaret. In 1850, when Margaret was 12, she invented the stop motion device, which she thought of after a coworker was injured due to a loose piece of machinery being flung across the room and hitting him. Ouch! This event was not uncommon of the era, and Margaret's invention helped save countless lives and has been invaluable to the industry. However, being 12, she obviously didn't know about patents or the fact that she could have profited from every factory adopting the safety device. Now, Margaret eventually became infamous for her inventions, but our story revolves around her idea to put a flat bottom on a paper bag. She was working in a factory in Massachusetts, the Columbia Paper Bag Company, folding and adhesing paper bags. See, at the time, they were often more of a cone shape or glued into a V-bottom at the end of an envelope-style folded pa- piece of paper. The process to make them flat was inefficient and time-consuming, so Margaret's brain worked her magic, and she soon envisioned a machine that could do that automatically. A little side note here is that some sources state that Margaret actually invented the whole concept of the flat-bottom paper bag, but in others, it just says that she came up with the machine to do it quicker. So soon she developed a wooden model of the machine and went to Boston to make an iron version. This is where our villain enters. Charles Anan was a visitor at the shop where Margaret was hashing out her mechanical development and he had full access of the assembly line. It wasn't until she was ready to claim her patent that she realized Charles had stolen the idea and taken credit. So she took him to court. Charles Anan's main argument And this is the main reason I wanted to tell the story, not realizing that Margaret was actually very important to the early 20th century, was that she couldn't possibly invent something so innovative. She's a woman. Well, Margaret's evidence of sketches, witnesses, and writings on the machine were overwhelming, and she won the case. She was actually the first American woman to win a patent infringement case. Margaret Knight went on to receive around 30 more patents, although it is recorded that she had way more inventions than that and is regarded as the female Edison, although she's actually nine years older than him. I want to comment on the importance of Margaret Knight and other female inventors of this era, as while keeping women uneducated during this time, men would take credit for women's inventions way too often. As I've mentioned, working conditions for women and children during this time were less than ideal, to put it mildly, and Margaret Knight was a perfect catalyst for the white woman's suffrage movement and workers' rights. Her story helped bring to light the less than ideal working conditions and the blatant disregard for women's thoughts, ideas, and comments on her environment. This episode of She Did What was written and engineered by me, Megan Maurer. A special thank you to Azua for providing the theme music. We will be back next week with another episode of She Did What. Thanks again for listening.